Congratulations, you are now a member of the 115th Congress. I'm delighted today to be joined by Congressman Jimmy Gomez. So nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Your road to Congress is fascinating for a number of reasons. I mean, you're the child of immigrant parents. Um, you watched your parents work really, really hard to, to make ends meet. So what did you see and what did you hear and what were you taught that thought, okay, I, I can do this. I can be a public servant and I may be able to affect change. Yeah, first, my, um, my parents uh, were from Mexico. My dad actually came here as a bracero, worked in the fields. It was a program for farm workers back in the um, 40s and the, and the 50s. He came in the late 50s. He was like one of the last cohorts to come out here. Braceros. In Spanish, this means a man who works with his arms and hands. It wasn't like Ozzie and Harriet where we sit around the table and they would give us a lecture of what we should learn from. It was more like setting an example. You work hard, you take care of your family, you make sure that you're doing well by your community, you, you give to people who have less than you. Are you folks proud? Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely proud. My dad passed away, he wasn't around to see it, but he was always proud to be from. And then my mom was, uh, um, she's always been proud, no matter what I did. That was, and that's, I think, what made them great parents. They didn't, they didn't care if I became an elected official or if I had a, worked at a job where I was just taking care of my family. They would have been proud either way. So are you feeling optimistic? Are you feeling positive? Are you feeling as if we're moving in a good direction and that government is efficiently working or has the potential to? Yeah, I, I do feel optimistic um, when it comes to, the, to different things that we've done. You have to make different decisions if you want different results. And during the American Rescue Plan, we passed um, an expanded monthly child tax credit. And it ranges anywhere from $250 to $300 per child per month. That one bill, that one piece of legislation, is cutting child poverty anywhere from 45% to 61% in this country. One policy change. So policy can work if you make different decisions when you're shaping that policy. Who is it gonna help? Who is it gonna impact? And does it work? How do you get implemented? So um, I am hopeful um, that people are seeing the results of what we're trying to do that will lead us to make better decisions when it comes to housing, homelessness, climate change, education, where we target resources so that we can get a, a bigger return on our, our hard-earned tax dollars. Well, I'll jump to money uh, to communities because actually you just secured funding for um, 10 community projects in your district. Uh, and the total was over $11 million, Sorry. which is a goodly amount of funding that is gonna help these community uh, efforts. So what were the projects and how will they help District 34? No, um, great question. So there's um, two parts, right? The community funding projects right. were the appropriation earmarks and then the Best in America Act that included um, 20 million that I secured. So okay. 5 million is for the um, LA Union Station to help with the high-speed rail redesign of the line. Um, so there's projects on transportation that are getting included in the infrastructure package, and then there's these um, community funding plans. These are um, just everything that our district needs, housing, um, combating climate change, we got $3.6 million for um, the engineering necessary for the LA River to restore that. Um, we got money for Boa Heights to do urban greening and, and cooling, uh, cool pavement. So, it's, uh, so we got a lot of um, great projects. And then investment, investing in our students from disadvantaged backgrounds, having them get, have counselors through, through um, Para Los Niños as well as Project Soars that operate in some of the government housing. We ended up getting also a million dollars for uh, Highland Park um, Arts uh, Center. And this is um, turning an old armory into an art center, matching with Prop K funds that had been on the books for a while, just needed the extra money to start, start the program. I'm proud of those, those projects. We had 110 submissions, but each member of Congress can only select 10 and submit those 10. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's highly, and, and, and it's highly complex, obviously, you know, the way it's all managed in regards to federal funds uh, that help uh, local areas. But you're also um, very uh, outspoken about a couple other issues in regards to um, general health and well welfare. You were very much a part of you know, lauding the federal eviction moratorium. Yeah. And that 
demonstrated that it was very important to you. What are those things that are important to you? The pandemic just showed, I think in stark terms, what a lot of people already knew, that, um, that there is a big wealth disparity in this country, there's an opportunity disparity in this country, and that we have to um, take steps to actively combat it. You know, who was getting infected more? Those people who were working class backgrounds that had to go into work, that had no choice but to go into work to support their family. It was immigrants, it was Latinos, it was African Americans. Those were disproportionately being, uh, getting the coronavirus and dying from it. Additionally, they're the ones that were also losing their jobs, struggling. So um, the eviction moratorium, we were fighting for first rent relief last year in the HEROES Act. We got it in the appropriations, $25 billion in the December um, appropriations. Means that it was going to go out to help people stay in their homes. Um, we also passed another $25 billion, roughly, in the American Rescue Plan in, in um, March once Joe Biden became president. That allows us to, um, the good example, City of LA, $243 million in rent relief. That's on top of the 100 million they used from the CARES Act the federal government passed last year. So keeping people in their homes is number one. Um, if you don't, you're just gonna have more people living on the streets and then trying to deal with that problem on the street level is gonna be more difficult. So um, I'm proud that the local um, officials passed an eviction moratorium extension on their own. However, the federal eviction moratorium was being challenged by the realtors and different folks and if they would have succeeded and we didn't expand it they would have came after the local mm. and the state so it, it, they go hand in hand and so shorted up yeah so we were um, fighting for every eviction moratorium extension since um, they um, we uh, myself Ayanna Presley, Corey Bush different folks because we um, we know what it would mean for working families when it's going to impact my constituents or the people I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight for them um, we ended up spending the, the nights on the steps of the Capitol to bring attention to the issue. I stayed with um, Corey Bush, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ayanna Presley, and we just made an argument that the president had the authority. He just needed to find the, the new justification to do it, which he ended up doing and extending it. So it was, it was a big win. Included in you know some of your interests is this transit to trails. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought that was really interesting and just getting out of your close-knit environment and have an opportunity to see things outside of your realm that might be um, inspiring from a natural standpoint. How did that come about? Well, um, growing up, I grew up in Riverside and we didn't, when we go on trips, we didn't go on vacations like a, a traditional family because we didn't have the money. Um, we would go, if we went to Mexico, it was the ba in the back of a pickup truck and my dad would drive all the way to his hometown and that's how we'd get there. But going to a national park where they had an entrance fee was always a, it was always a barrier because are you going to spend that $5 or $10 on the entrance fee or are you going to spend it on food, on, on tortillas and beans or, or eggs for your family, right? It's so it's a matter of making decisions. It was always, I always wanted to go to these national parks. Um, and that's something that kind of sat with me. So coming up with the Transit to Trails Act was about how do you give people from urban areas or disadvantaged communities that don't necessarily have the resources or the transportation to visit our public lands and our national parks, how do you give them access? So this bill, the Transit to Trails, what um, Cory Booker introduced in the, in the Senate would allow to create a federal grant program for, um, for communities and nonprofits to apply for the grant so that they can take kids from the urban centers to the parks or to the public lands. Um, there's programs out there like that, but not to the scale that we need so that people can see what's, what's beyond their front door or their neighborhood. And when you do that, it's about showing them that there are opportunities beyond their neighborhoods, right? To experience that part of America or to experience something else. So Transit Your Trails is, is to kind of open people's um, imagination and perspective while giving them a place to recreate and enjoy the outdoors. And that's a wrap on this LA Current.